Let's talk a little bit of Tennessee football. The Vols with a scrimmage on Wednesday kind of marks the halfway point. Here are some things that you need to know. And one is that they're continuing to push Nico Ia Maleava to communicate with both the offensive linemen, the skill position players. It's push, push, push. And he seems to be doing that. He's very engaged. I think that's his nature. I think there are other uh, quarterbacks that Tennessee has had a push in that regard. I don't think Nico is one of those guys. I think he feels that. And I think he feels like being the overall leader, no matter if you're playing backup guard or you're playing uh, first team wide receiver, Brew McCoy, you need to know that he's the leader of that offense. Yeah, I agree. I think the big thing is making sure Nico is the leader and they're trying to push that as much as possible. This is where I come. But this time, I think it's legit. Now, traditionally, when narratives get out there, when they say somebody's this or that, I sometimes take it with a grain of salt because I worry that they're trying to push something on somebody. So, if, but I've seen enough of Nico in press conferences and the way he carries himself. He's a natural leader. Yep. Agreed. And then Eminem. Hey now. Mike, the man, Matthews. He uh, actually got a shout out. Mike made a play down the sideline, according to Josh Heupel. And then to add another one on there, Boo gets a shout out as well. Boo Carter. Now, one player might be a standout and get a mention during a post scrimmage press conference, but two true freshmen getting a shout out. Is that to get people excited about the young players or are they legitimately better than the guys before them? And mm, as good as their ratings, which is five and four star respectively with Matthews and Boo. It speaks to their level of expectations. So now before anybody tries to correct us on this, yes, Josh Heupel named other people in yesterday's press conference. Oh, and we're going to get to those. Yes, but he didn't name them unless he was asked about that position specifically. So, you know, there's what do you think of the defensive backs? And he named every defensive back. So you're not going to hear me sit there and say, well, I mean, he named every single defensive back, so they're all going to be good. No, I'm not, not going to do that, okay? But well, And Josh Heupel, too, two years ago, would not have offered these guys up even if you asked about them. Exactly. But when he named Mike Matthews and, Brew, and, and uh, Boo Carter, that happened before he was even asked about players at specific positions. So he just volunteered them up. That's not something Josh Eichel does. So it's one of two things. He's either expecting these guys to be stars now, and I mean right now, and he's trying to push that on them, or they really are standing out that much in practice. Because otherwise, if you know anything about Josh Heupel, you know he wouldn't do that. Yep, very portions of the program brought to you by Newbert Collision Center. For nearly 50 years, Newbert Collision Center has East Tennessee's best choice for quality repair work and fantastic customer service right down below Joe Newbert Collision Center. We heard about Cam Selden being out. We'll see if he is a spring superstar as it's beginning to look like that, but he won't be for the remainder of this spring. He was fantastic last spring and didn't have much of an impact. Questions about his vision are fair. The subs for him, well, Dylan Sampson's probably going to be the starter, but how they handle those snaps, I don't know. I'd rather him get 15 good snaps in the fourth quarter touches than 15 good snaps in the first half. So it would be Sampson, Khalifa Keith. Uh, we're talking about spring camp, Deshaun Bishop. Ugh. I don't want Sampson touching the ball a lot. Keith is the power back. Bishop, sorry. Not that talented. I don't know how many good looks Tennessee's defense is going to get out of the, the running back position this spring practice. No, you're right. Which actually, and to add to that, I think they largely, even though they need to do some work at running back, they can spend time in fall camp figuring that out. They want to get ahead of the curve with the secondary. So they're going to be throwing the ball even more than they usually do in spring practice, I think, because they really need, they need Nico to get a rhythm with his receivers, but they got to find out who's good in the secondary and who's not. I mean, that's a big deal if you've been watching Tennessee the past three years. Nope. Uh, no argument with that. Some uh, other notes from the uh, football team is uh, they will uh, take a little bit of a break for Easter. Then they'll be back for the second half of camp. But as, as a whole, I think that you get through a half of spring practice and you've just got one significant injury. And I would, I would say Selden is a significant injury. 
you probably count your lucky stars because that would equal two. Um, and we're not talking about season ending injuries, but if you get two off season injuries is what I'm going to call them. That's what I'll term them just for, you know, you miss time in the off season, but August is still good. If, if, if they come out of spring camp with just that, they'll, they'll take that right now. Any coach in America would take that. Do you think Josh Heupel has learned his lesson though from Cooper Mays last year? Uh, if a guy needs surgery, is dinged up, we're going to try to get them to have it as quickly as possible. Well, the net. Okay, so we'll, what we've learned is that, and and this puts me in a weird position because this is nothing that Cooper Mays has told me. So I want to be really, really clear um, because I don't ask Cooper about stuff like this so that I don't put either one of us in a position because I enjoyed the Q and A and I'm busy with him later today. But I do believe that there were some people in Tennessee's camp that wanted him to have the hernia surgery earlier in the year, and he did not. Um, and that Tennessee was hoping he'd be ready for the beginning of fall camp. Well, instead, he was ready for the beginning of the fall camp, but then had issues uh, with with the abdomen and the tear and the hernia there and wasn't ready for the Florida game, and we know what happened there. So, yeah, I think you want to address those, but I don't think it's cut and dry. I'm not going to come down on Josh Heupel for the timing of that. I mean, if it would have healed up on its own, which may, it may well could have, then it's not even a story, Caleb. But it wasn't handled the right way in retrospect. Right. And so I guess that was for summer workouts, too, to have them ready, because you're right. You never hold somebody. You, you never play somebody in the spring if that is an issue. Um, yeah, I would have so. think I would have based off the timing, I would have thought it came from the spring and then he goes into summer workouts and it's kind of like, okay, now's the time that could take it a little bit easier on you. So, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that regard. That, that would be my thinking. Uh, Rick Terry jewelry design. They want to be your jeweler looking for affordable game day jewelry. How about the fire opals, the Tennessee tradition, Rick Terry jewelry.com Rick Terry jewelry.com by the way we need to check in on our celebrity bracket challenge which you have a chance to take on some just incredible celebrities from the area i'm talking about big big time celebrities i mean huge like okay i'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and see where everybody stands how about that caleb because the winner gets to win some fire opals from rick terry jewelry design you'll love those so here we go where is uh, my bracket is up there uh looking pretty good strong to quite strong as usual uh zach hare is number one he's hoping for houston out of sports treasures sports treasures over five million sports treasures check them out north knoxville they provide the brew mccoy autographed helmet we'll be giving away as part of hooker's corner on friday tomorrow so looking forward to giving that away if you haven't signed up just nine dollars and 98 cents and you can get recruiting information i rank tennessee's offensive lineman on the hooker's corner patreon page we'll have that on the message board here momentarily but first give us a rundown of how everybody's doing in our uh, celebrity bracket challenge caleb because it looks like you're doing okay, which makes me a little bit sad. If people want, yeah, to wait, where is my? Yes, no I'm disrespect to Zach, but I'm tied with Zach for number one. Go look at that. Look at that. It's it's number one by both of our names. Well, yeah, but he has more. <clears throat> but he has more possible points, so I put him number one. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, he could score 170. You, he could, he controls his own destiny. Um, so then you would have you. You're doing a fantastic job, and. Uh, then the other uh, people that are competing, uh, Radomir Pavosevic. Uh, congratulations, Radomir. You're doing great. Look at Jimmy Himes, my guy, climbing up there. He was always uh, already at the bottom. John Adams is already mathematically eliminated. <laughs> uh, you got to love that. Jeremy is not mathematically eliminated. He's right there. Michael, Stacy Oliver, our fantastic writer who does so much with baseball, is there as well. Uh, Bruce at City Heating and Air Conditioning. And there's me in at number eight, tied with Fred White and David Leverton, Scott Thompson of Dynasty Pools and Spas. So Spencer Riley down there looking for Houston. 
Uh, John Pennington of the Sports Source, certainly check that out every Sunday at 11 o'clock. They do a great job. Josh Ward down there. We are basically dominating uh, the celebrities. Is that That's what it comes down to. How about that? Pretty much. And you're also, I see, dominating your wife, who is way down there, too. I'm not going to call Shandell, but, you know, <laughs> uh, I like Shandell, so just wanted to troll her. Uh, yeah. she's just good for a little trolling and maybe a little dominating at times as well. All right. So oh God. You opened that up. How am I not supposed to follow up on that? <laughs> you are, you are. Okay. Every I once in a while. That trap. Yeah. Every once in a while. I mean, Dom or sub, I mean, isn't that something?